We are in a new sermon series here called God's Life Choosing Simplicity. God's Life Choosing Simplicity. We're going to go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19. We're going to go to Matthew 19. While we're going there, just want to say, look, we've been in these kind of mini series where we're going somewhere. So we started out with God's talking, real people, real prayers, God's presence, a life of worship, and now we're in God's life, choosing simplicity. If you've missed any of these previous sermons, don't worry about it. We're going to catch you up. But two, you can go to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe there. Or we have a Midtown Church podcast. So anywhere you can subscribe, podcast, it's free. You can go there and you can catch up on all the messages. We hope you'll do that. So we're starting out God's life, choosing simplicity, and we're in Matthew chapter 19, beginning with verse 16. Just then, a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones, he inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I've kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. From this text, I want to preach to you on the title, Peace over possessions. Peace over possessions. God, I pray that this would be your message, that ultimately you would be speaking, and I would just be the vessel, the vehicle that you have decided to use to say what you want to say. To these, your beloved children, my sisters and brothers, God, I desire to be obedient to your word. So please let it be done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Before I get into this sermon, I just want to say something important. $75 for me in the dunk tank. $75. I got Timberlands on, man. You know how much it's going to take to clean these after? But with God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. Okay, back to the sermon. Have you been in search of peace? Have you ever had a day or a week where you just said, I just need some peace. I've been at work all day, and if I could just go get some peace now. And you get home and realize in your own house are to some anti-peace elements. <laughs> so you've been, all day you say, I just need some peace. You get home, and then you're just thinking, if sometime tonight I can get some peace. If sometime this week I can get some peace. Maybe I just need a vacation so I can just go somewhere and find some peace. You know, sometimes you want peace so bad you just go, look, if I could just have a few minutes of peace. I, I don't, I'm not even asking for a day of peace anymore. I just, I just, if I could just get a few minutes of peace. Do you know, sisters and brothers, it's possible to accumulate wealth to have a bunch of academic degrees, to have a great position at work, to have all kinds of material possessions and have no peace. You can have thousands of Instagram followers. Your TikTok can be banned. Have no peace. You can be living in the house you always wanted, wearing the clothes you always wanted to wear, and still have no peace peace. What makes peace so distant? Because peace doesn't come through accumulation. Peace doesn't come sometimes with age. Huh. So peace can feel distant. 
But what makes peace seem so distant, sisters and brothers, I think is busyness. Busyness, clutteredness. See, some people are just looking for a moment of peace. God wants you to have a life of peace. But the kind of peace that God wants you and I to have is a peace that is not dependent on circumstance. It's dependent on a savior. It's not dependent on a moment. It's dependent on the Messiah. God desires that we find peace by not simply engaging him for a moment, but experiencing him for a lifetime. What is keeping us from truly experiencing peace, from truly experiencing God daily? Is it busyness? Is it possessions? Is it priorities or lack thereof? What's keeping us from having a life of peace? This story here in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 29, is about, I'm sorry, chapter 19, is about Jesus a rich young man, and the kingdom of God. It's important that you see all those elements in this story. Jesus, the rich young man, the kingdom of God. There's a cameo appearance by Peter, the disciple. But this story, for the most part, is about Jesus, a rich young man, and the kingdom of God. Before I go into the main points of this sermon, uh, really telling you what this story is about, let me first talk to you about what this story is not saying, What what this story is not about. This story is not saying that you can't be wealthy and follow Jesus. That's not what this story is saying. It's not saying to follow Jesus, you can't be rich, you can't be wealthy. No, that's not what it's saying because we've already seen in the Bible stories of people that were wealthy having deep encounters with God. I mean, there are people who are wealthy that like wrote portions of the Bible inspired by God. Like Solomon was rich. Solomon is, 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 is... shown in the Bible to be one of the wisest leaders ever. Like, like, like there are books in the Bible either talking about the life of Solomon or it's his direct words himself. So this story is not saying that you can't be connected to God and be wealthy. That's not what the story is saying. The story is also not saying that, um, that, that you have to be, you have to be like poverty stricken to really be holy. Like you have to live in extreme poverty in order to really experience God in deep, powerful ways. That that story's not saying that. This story, what it is about though, is surrender and simplification to follow Jesus. Surrender and simplification to have an experience of peace with God regardless of what you're going through. Because peace as a movement and not just a moment is not predicated on the circumstance. Matter of fact, uh, ne- next, next Sunday, Pastor Bob is going to come and, and in Philippians, he's going to talk about a peace that passes all understanding, that can guard your heart and mind, which means there's a peace that God wants you and I to experience that it doesn't matter what we're going through. I know what we're going through matters, but I'm saying your ability to have peace can endure regardless of what you're going through. You can have a peace that can set your emotions, set your mindset, set your life in such a way that you can go through challenge, you can go through circumstances, you can go in what they call hell and high water, and you can grow, you can mature, you can get better, you can heal. This is the kind of peace that God wants us to have. So what's keeping us from this is maybe, maybe because our life is too cluttered, too complicated, and we need to choose a life with God that is more simple, more simple. For some people, they have made the Christian life too complicated. They've made life in general too complicated. And so what, what I want to do is, 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 is I want to invite you into simplicity with God. 
a more simple understanding of who God is and what it means to be in relationship with God. It's simple. Find Jesus, find peace. Don't make life too complicated. You know, um, in the 1990s and early 2000s, there was another wave of like business books and leadership books coming out. There were books like Good to Great. And, uh, and, and so I remember, you know, I'm always trying to read things, listen to things, because I want to be a better leader. I want to be a better servant leader. And so, um, but I remember a, a business guy uh, said to me, he said, you know, um, it's good that you're reading books about leadership and business and organizations and all that stuff. He said, but he introduced me to an acrostic, KISS, K-I-S-S. Now, you know, what he said it meant was keep it simple, stupid. But I was like, man, that's insulting. So I came up with this for today. Keep it simple, saints. See, don't that feel better? Wouldn't you rather your pastor call you a saint? Because it's me, Pastor Ephraim. Pastor Bob will be back. <laughs> oh, he's probably outside. He didn't hear that. <laughs> Keep it simple, saints. Don't make the Christian life too complicated. Don't make your life too complicated. Don't make love so complicated. Don't make peace so complicated. Don't make looking into your future so complicated. Don't make, don't make finding you so complicated. Amen. Keep it simple. Do you know God simply loves you just the way you are? Yes. Do you know that God simply, now God may want to grow you, mature you, further develop you, take some things out of you, make you a better you, but, but that is not the, the, the on-ramp to God loving you. It's simple. God already loves you. It's simple. You're made in the image of God. It's simple. You are valuable and worthy and special. It's simple. Keep it simple, saints. But when it comes to peace over possessions, when it comes to following Jesus, let's keep it simple. Let's go back to the text. It's simple. Find Jesus, find peace. How do we do that? How do we keep it simple, saints? Point one, get in God's presence. You want to find peace? You don't want to be dominated by materialism, your possessions. You, you want to find peace in the midst of business? Get in God's presence. Matthew 19, verse 16 says, Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Get in God's presence. It's simple. It's, now, this, I got to tell you ahead of time, this young man, he's, he's asking in this text a series of bad questions. His first bad question is, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? You see how transactional that sounds? Some people come to church, some people come to God and they want a transaction. If I do this, God, what do I get? If I commit to this, what do I get? Transactional. Maybe this guy was speaking transactional because he's used to, he's a rich, young man. He's used to, what does that cost? Just let me know. What do I need to do? You need me to volunteer. You need me to write a check. I can buy that. What, what good thing? You want me to write a check? Want to do a selfie afterwards? Want me to get the big cardboard check and we just hold it up? Like, what good thing do I need to do to get eternal life? We, we don't know this young man's name. All we know is he's young and he's rich, which means there's a possibility that he didn't earn this money himself that he's lost sight of. This is his mama and daddy's money that's been passed down to him. He inherited this, but he's, but he's acting like he pulled himself up by his bootstraps. He's acting like, you know, he, he you know, started from the bottom, now I'm here. Like, he's, like, he's, like that, that's how he's acting? Like, like he did it, and so he's so used to it. Ever since he was a little kid, he just like, what do you want? Okay, we're gonna buy that. What do you want? And so he's like, what, 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 what good thing do I have to do to get eternal Life, why do you, why, Jesus like, why are you asking me this? There is only one who's good. 
If you want a peace that passes all understanding, if you want an intimate encounter daily with the Prince of Peace, get in God's presence. That is one of the things here that this rich young man does do right. He came up to Jesus. He came into the presence of Jesus. Now, I don't believe he fully knows who Jesus is yet. He doesn't know that this person is, is truly God and truly human. He doesn't know that yet, but, but at least he's in the presence of God. But, but you know how he was able to get in God's presence? Because God got in his presence first. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want peace? You need to stop thinking that God is so far away. Do you know you can get in God's presence anywhere because God is everywhere. You don't have to wait till you get in here to get in God's presence. You, you didn't, I don't know if you realized that when you woke up at your house this morning, you were in the presence of God. When you walked out to your car, you were in the presence of God. When you found you a parking spot and start walking to seven blocks because you had to find a parking spot seven blocks away from here and you walked anyway, that was, that was the presence of God following you the whole way. When you leave here, the presence of God, you can't escape it. You can't get away from it. The Bible shows us how people don't, don't, it's not about people stepping into God's presence. It's people stepping into the reality that God has been present all along. When he met Moses on the mountain, he stepped into Moses' presence. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he met Daniel in the lion's den, he, he stepped into to, to Daniel's situation. God is present. You can't escape God. Get in God's presence. Acknowledge that you are in God's presence regardless of the circumstance. It's simple. He's saying, Jesus said, okay, you want, it, you want to enter eternal life? Keep the commandments. But Jesus has already said, if you read the entirety of the gospels, you'll find that Jesus says, and the greatest of these commandments, love the Lord your God with your heart, mind, soul, strength, all of you, all of who you are. Love God with your whole self. It's simple. It, there's only one worthy to be worshipped. This is not about a transaction. This is about transformation. The rich young man doesn't know this yet. He's making it too complicated. He's trying to do something that is not humanly possible. He's saying, I'm, I'm so used to this. I have the money. I've got the notoriety. I have the privilege. I have the reputation. You know who my mom and daddy is? You know our last name? What do, what do we got to do to purchase, to buy, to get this eternal life? You're making it too complicated, bro. Get in God's presence. Point two, get under God's provision. Get under God's provision. Verse 18, um, so, so Jesus says, keep the commandments. The rich young man says, which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. All these I kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Get under God's provision. Again, to understand this correctly, to understand this rightly, you have to understand that this is not about to follow Jesus. You have to sell everything you have. That's not what this story is saying. To follow Jesus, y'all, like as soon as this service is over, Go sell your house. Yes. Yes. Go sell your car. Yes. Have, have the biggest garage sale you ever had this week and bring all the possessions back to Midtown Covenant Church here at 2225 19th Street, Sacramento, California, 9581. No! It's not what this is. I had to think about that statement for a little bit, but no, that's not what this is about. So what is it about? This is about... God's provision. The again, the rich young man is saying, what do I got to do to get eternal life? Can I purchase it? You need me to volunteer? You're not volunteering so you can get eternal life. You're volunteering because you already have eternal life. You're not being generous 
to get eternal life. You are being generous out of the overflow of your intimate relationship with God, knowing that you already have the assurity in Jesus of eternal life. So, so you're, not, you're not doing this to impress anybody. You're not doing this to check off a box. You're doing this out of the overflow of your transformed heart. See, see, so, so, so what, what Jesus is saying is, he says, okay, you really want to go down this road. Okay, you want to you, you, you know how you can make eternal life possible. You, you think you can buy it. Sell everything you have. Why is Jesus saying this? Because Jesus is showing him what it takes to get eternal life in your own power, in your own might. He said, okay, I want you to follow me so that you can experience what it really takes to provide eternal life because eternal life, to, to make eternal life possible, it takes the ultimate of sacrifice. So Jesus says, this is what getting eternal life looks like. I left eternity. I left being in the most intimate connection of oneness with the creator of the universe, my heavenly father. I came down here because that's what it takes to get eternal life. I was born into poverty because that's what it takes to get eternal life. I came here a perfect man with no sin and let all the sin of humanity come on my back because that's what it takes to get eternal life. If you want to see this, come on then. Since you want it, come on, Cletus. Let's go. You want to see what it takes to get eternal eternal life. You got to be born into poverty. You got to leave heaven. You got to live as a refugee. You've got to be despised. You got to be lied on. Then you got to let them beat you in public till you almost want to die. Then they got to incarcerate you. Oh, and you have to be God. And then you got to go to the cross and be forced into a borrowed tomb. That's what it takes. You want that rich man? I'd have went away sad too. Now, you know, on second thought, I'll take this life, this life. Just let me get plain life. (laughs) You got to do all that? Because what Jesus is about to do is bigger than selling all your possessions. Peace over possessions. He left heaven. Jesus is telling this rich young man what it really takes to buy eternal life. You can't do it. I can't do it. All we can do is get under it. Just get, just, just, just because it's already been done. It's already been provided for. Stop trying to buy it. It's already been purchased on your behalf. You know, years ago when I was still living in Minnesota, um, this, this uh, successful business guy that was going to our church invited me and another pastor to go out to dinner. And so he said, hey, Pastor Ephraim, I want to take you and Pastor Keith out to dinner. And I said, oh, okay. And he said, and after that, we're going to go to a concert. And I said, oh, wow, that's great. And so uh, he took us to this restaurant. And, and um, he, oh, he told us ahead of time, he said, this restaurant we're going to, you got to wear a sports coat, can't wear jeans. I was like, oh, oh, okay, all right. So we go in there, and we're sitting around the table. I'm waiting for him to bring menus. They never bring the menu. I said, should I ask for a menu? He said, it's not that kind of restaurant, Pastor. Just relax. I said, oh, okay. So then they pulled up a cart. And on this cart, it was like an assortment of steaks and lamb and lobster and, and crab and stuff. Like, like the crab was still sitting there like, what y'all doing? <laughs> and and so, um, so we didn't have no menu, you know. So I said, he's like, what do you want? And so I go, how much does that cost? He says, no, pastor. He said, Pastor, if you have to ask how much it cost, you shouldn't be in here. (laughs) He said, Pastor, because I love you and I love Pastor Keith, everything tonight has been taken care of. It's already provided for. I said, well, then give me two of dims right there. Give me two of dims. And that cake. That's what eternal life is like. Jesus is saying, 
you can't afford this. Stop asking. Stop asking for the menu. It's already been taken care of. I, I've, I, I've, I've already paid the price. Get under God's provision. There is only one who is God. There is only one who is perfect. And people make this too complicated. There are people that don't believe that there's just one God and one way to God. So they make it complicated. They take a little mix, you know, this, it's like, uh, you know, uh, Ricky Bobby, uh, you know, on Talladega Nights. He, 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 he didn't want to miss out. So he's praying to everything. He's like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Buddha. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, Oprah. He, didn't, he was just, just covering all his bases. That's too complicated. He's like, I'm praying to baby Jesus, grown Jesus, white Jesus, black Jesus, Democrat Jesus, Republican Jesus, celebrity. I'm, I'm going to pray to all of them just in case. That is way too complicated. It's simple, saints. One God, one way to God. And your sins have already been covered. The price has already been paid. When you get to heaven, you'll be in a place that you don't deserve to be, but it's your way has already been provided for. If you have to ask how much it costs to get into heaven and what do I need to do to get there, you don't need to be up in there. Let me just break it down like this. Hell is so much cheaper and you don't have to get a layaway plan. It, you can just go right up in there. It's hot, though. It's hot. It's hot. Can I turn the air on in here? Can you turn the air on? Get under God's provision. Final point. Get with God's program. Verse 23, chapter 19. Then Jesus said to his disciples, truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Really pay attention to that. It says, he said it's hard. He didn't say it's impossible. He said it's hard. He said it's hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Please know that doesn't say if you're rich, you can't get into heaven. That's not what it said. It said it's hard, and Jesus is going to explain to them why it can be a challenge. But just because something's a challenge doesn't mean that you can't get through it. Man, I have a doctorate degree, but if you saw my undergraduate transcript, <laughs> you would have thought it was easier for a camel to get through a needle than to Ephraim Smith to get a doctorate. But the prayers of my grandmama and my mama and daddy prevaileth in Christ much. It took me 10 years to get a doctorate, but you're going to call me Reverend Doctor. It took me a while. <laughs> so just because it's hard don't mean it's not possible for you. How many challenges, how many things have you turned away from that was, it was God for you to do it, but because it was hard, you stopped? Because it felt so complicated, you threw in the towel. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not possible. Because the disciples say in verse 25, when they heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, well, who can be saved? If, it, if, it's, if it's hard, if it's difficult, if, if, if it's easier for a camel to get through an eye of a needle, then, then you know, with, wow, wow, who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. In Ephraim, righteousness, holiness is not possible. But with God, it is. See, this is what's possible with Ephraim. Like, you want to know what's possible in the name of Ephraim? Envy, jealousy, unforgiveness, uh, uh, um, sustained anger, uh, pride, uh, selfishness, cussing. Well, not. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm being a little bit too transparent with y'all. But, you know, you understand what I'm saying. Y'all looking at me like cuss words ain't never come out y'all mouth. I'm, something tells me this whole section right here. I'm not prophesying, but a cuss word's going to come out this group by Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. You, don't, you ain't going to mean to do it. Ask God for forgiveness ahead of time. 
I believe in you, though. I believe in you. Good luck. Get with God's program. There's nothing you can do to be righteous. Nothing you can do to be holy. Get that, get, that's God's agenda. Get with God's program. What is God's program? Peter answered, we've left everything to follow you. What then will be there for us? Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, that's God's program, that we be renewed. When the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, one Savior, one Messiah, that's God's program. You who have, who have followed me will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive 100 times as much and will inherit eternal life. Now, what he's saying is the, the program, the ultimate destination is the kingdom of God. It's simple. It's about entering God's kingdom, not building your own. We have a choice to make, our agenda or God's agenda. Your agenda for your manhood or God's agenda. Your agenda for your womanhood or God's agenda. Your agenda for your single life or God's agenda. Your agenda for your marriage or God's agenda. Your agenda for raising kids or God's agenda. Your agenda for your career or God's agenda. Your agenda for your finances or God's agenda. Your agenda for your body or God's agenda. I mean, it's simple. It's simple. And I ain't talking politics. I'm talking Bible. It's simple. Will we allow ourselves already loved by God, already valuable, already made in the image of God, to day by day, our lives more resemble citizenship in the kingdom of God? Sisters and brothers, it's simple. Get to God's goal. Church is not a mouthpiece of the nation. It's an outpost of the kingdom of God. The church is not made up of righteous people, but people made righteous in Christ. The church is not a community of people who save themselves, but people saved by grace. It's simple. It's simple. It is not impossible to follow Jesus. It is not impossible to follow Jesus. It is not impossible. You can have peace in your life. I'm going to close in prayer and um, there'll be some folks up here. They would love to pray with you. And so if you need uh, prayer for any reason, we would be so honored, so honored to pray for you, to pray with you. God, you are peace. You're the Prince of Peace. You're eternal peace. And God, let our lives not be so cluttered, so busy, so complicated that we can't step into your presence, that we can't live under your provision, that we can't get with your program and agenda for our lives, that we might have a peace that lasts no matter the circumstances. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. God bless you, God bless you, amen. Thank you for watching the Midtown Church YouTube channel. But don't stop right there. Make sure to join the online family by subscribing right here. And make sure to hit that bell icon too so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, share this with a friend. Thank you guys again for watching and God bless.